One thing I do know about Earth, Wind, and Fire as a as a band, and and about Maurice White as a as a leader and as a producer is they you guys were incredibly uh, big sticklers for specifics, and it, I mean everything was about quality control, sound quality control. The production of the albums was impeccable. The uh, the stage presentation was impeccable, and then you're throwing the magic element on top of it. Was there? Were you guys going? Why are we doing this? No, we actually were big fans and are still big fans of theater, mm-hmm. and we wanted to make sure that we gave the audience more than what they paid for, and we still try to uh, go about setting that same presence in in our performances and the way we conduct our business. And uh, we really think that that is one of the things that's, that's indicative of us still being around yeah. after all this time. 30-something 30 30, years. 37 years. Yeah. And uh, in the state of the, the, the economy's in and the whole thing is still selling shows out uh, almost every night. And it's an expensive product, actually, to put on stage. It because definitely is. Because uh, Earth, Wind & Fire, from day one, it wasn't like four guys standing around. That's right. I mean, it was like there were, uh, it, at some point, it seemed like there were about 100 guys on the stage at any given moment. Because uh, obviously, EWF, which, Horns, which became its own kind of entity for a while. And then you had the, uh, you know, this huge set of, and backup musicians that, that, that would play with you guys on tour, too. Exactly. It's an 11-piece entourage on the stage and then you have your personnel and your crew buses and trucks and all that kind of stuff it's huge it so, is even for even trying to cut back in today's time and try to be trying to be lean, lean and mean it's still a large organization of the original members from the from the early 1970s and you joined um like i think one album in right weren't you yes, yes you, myself verdine and ralph who are still the uh uh performing members of Earth, Wind & Fire from the original group, myself, Verdine White, and Ralph Johnson. Right, and you're the, the so you're the original three. And this isn't yes. like one of those cases where no. there are other Earth, Wind & Fires out there. This is the... the 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 corporate lines of this of right. this organization have always been the same, and they've been very, very uh, in line and... Uh, and honoring the, the the wishes of Maurice White, the founder of Earth, Wind, and Fire, who has been ill. Yes, right? yes, yes. He was diagnosed with Parkinson's about wow, it's been that's almost been twenty years ago, really. Yeah, but he's still very active. But he doesn't do any stage work. He doesn't anymore. do any stage work, or uh, he's still very active producing. In fact, uh, he just did uh, Brian Coberson, and uh, so you know he's still a very talented person. And did you did I read that you produced because uh, I'm a, a slight geek for the funk era? Did you produce the Daz Band first album? <laughs> yeah, we produced me and actually me and Ralph and Tommy Vacari, a producer at that time, a um, uh, producer uh, engineer. We produced was it their second album. Yeah. I think it was their second one. It's amazing because the what and I think that the difference uh, in what. And the reason that, that uh, Earth, Wind & Fire went into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2000 is because of this quality control issue. It was all, the first and most important thing was, and if you listen to these albums, you listen to, and, and, and you know, you go back to you, you, the Breakthrough album, That's the Way of the World, in what, 74, 75, whatever mm-hmm. that was. Uh, you, you go even before that. If you go back and you listen to it, it's amazing. And you listen to the live albums from that era because you put out a live album in the, in the late seventies. The the production quality and live albums. A lot of uh, bands were just putting out live albums because they had to make their minimum of albums that they owed the record company. So they would just throw a live album in there and <laughs> right, go, you know, right. that's good enough. And any amount of crap. And sometimes things weren't working out. And you would think things were dropping out. And the Earth, Wind, and Fire live album is probably the best produced live album you'll ever hear. You hear. Everything you can end up hear a pin drop. Well, George Massenburg uh, is just a fantastically talented engineer, sound person, and you know I think with Earth, Wind, and Fire, it was kind of a combination of a lot of great people coming together at the same time. Uh, from from Chicago, Charles Stepney and the, the Phoenix Horns with the late Donald Myrick and and uh, Lou Satterfield, late Lou Satterfield, Lou Satterfield. Mm-hmm. all those different individuals coming together. Tom Tom eighty four, David Foster. It was just a convergence at a time and place. Ali Willis, where you know it was a Super Bowl organization, and uh, we were very very fortunate at the same time. All star to- players, and I think part of this is, and let's go back a little bit to the foundation. People don't, and maybe they're not aware of this, but. 
Chicago was really instrumental in the creation of Earth, Wind, and Fire because Maurice White had moved up here yes. uh, early on in his career and was kind of a, 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 a jazz yep. uh, working musician. With, working with uh, Ramsey uh, Lewis. Lewis and right. working over at Chess Records and doing jingles and all that kind of stuff. And they, they gave him a nickname Rooney for Rooney Tunes because he you know, always came up with hooks. And that's primarily kind of the way he was able to uh, take a lot of the d- different elements of music and intricate horn licks and stuff such as the stuff that we did and make it commercial because he had a real niche for what's hooky Mm -hmm. but at the same time he threw a little jazz overtone on it like when you hear um the uh uh, got to get you in my life which is right your version of got to get you in my bebop horn lick you know and just married to and he brought an instrument that had heretofore never been in american pop music the kalimba the the the, the, uh the finger thumb piano right yes and 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 then and played it like with ferocity on stage, right? And you and the sound it made was not something that had been heard in in American music prior to that. Exactly. We still I, I play that now in, in the shows, and it's still a, a signature piece for Earth, Wind, and Fire. Did you? Did it take you a long time to learn that? Uh, there's not really. I'm still I'm still learning it. And the, really, the the key to it is just your c- conception, to, um, concept, and the tuning of it. Yeah, because it's well, and it, it, it's amazing. It, I guess the BlackBerry generation would be better at this instrument than uh, <laughs> than like the generations before, because we're now used to like talking with our thumbs, uh, and that's basically you hold it like a BlackBerry, and you just kind of you yeah, know yeah. both thumbs going right. Yep, yeah, because yeah, you're holding it with the other fingers, so you only got those thumbs working. <laughs> so, all right, what is the uh, now? Thirty-seven years with Wind and Fire has been together, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down, right? You just get, continue to do shows and. It really doesn't, and we just came from from Europe, the, be- Europe, the beginning of the year, and uh, South America, and we played thirty thousand people in, in Holland. Uh, and still, ourselves. young audiences coming out. Uh, for everything from six to sixty-five, seventy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and 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 I'm serious when I say six because we've got young kids out there that know all the songs. Um, we met a little drummer the other day, uh, and he was uh, maybe maybe eight. Uh, at Tops, playing Shining Star and the whole thing, and a little drum phenom. He was he was on uh, the uh, Oprah Winfrey show and the whole thing. But yeah, it's amazing to see the the all the people, nationalities, age groups uh, around the world yeah. that are still picking up on the, the music of Earth, Wind, and Fire. And I, I really attribute that to a fantastic concept that Maurice came up with of fusing a lot of different elements of music together and making them commercial but at the same time you know philosophically it was a music that even today um it feels good to hear the lyrics that are you know not trashing people and the whole thing it's an uplifting message um and uh I don't think it ever goes out of style. All right, EWFFanClub.com yes. is, uh, is still up and going. All right, uh, Philip Bailey, play us out, would you? Give us, give us a little something to get out here. Ah, oh, me and Phil Collins. Does he love a him? lot of people don't remember that this is you, too. This is me, too. Think about this for a second. One of the greatest voices in American music history, Philip Bailey. Thanks for being here. Hey, thank you, man. The Rocon Show on 890 AM WLS.